will also be live on Zago and KBN Facebook pages and YouTube channels. Tune in and share that health experience. Hello, good evening, and uh, apologies for the breakdown in the transmission due to some technical faults. Uh, this is Inside Health, a program that discusses various health issues that are affecting Zambians and beyond, and also a program that promotes sexual reproductive health and rights. Uh, it is brought to you by the Zambia Association of Gynecologists and Obstetricians, ZAGO, with the support from the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics, FIGO. I'm your host, Tumenji Chinjili. This evening, we'll be looking at um, most, one of the most critical problems that our Zambian societies are facing today, and that is adolescent pregnancy, commonly known as teenage pregnancy. Teenage pregnancy is one of the most uh, uh, problems that our country is facing at the moment. This is because the problem does not only affect the realization of full potential of our girls, but also it undermines their rights. Teenage pregnancies brings with it terrible effects, such as so, uh, school dropouts, psychological stress, sexually transmitted diseases, abortion, stigma, as well as discrimination, and so on and so forth. So to help me explore this uh, topic, and to help us understand more about this problem that we are facing today, I've been joined in the studio by Dr. Andrew Kumwenda. Doc, welcome to the program and good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you, Doc. Uh, remember, we are on our Facebook pages, which is Zago and KBN. Then you can also subscribe to our YouTube channels, Zago and KBN TV. You can also be part of this program by calling us on the number that's showing on your screen to make those uh, contributions and also to ask the questions that you might have. So, Doc, to get right in, uh, straight into our program, could you just briefly tell us who Dr. Kumwenda is, what he does, and where he works from? All right. So, Dr. Andrew Kumwenda is an obstetrician and a gynecologist and also a public health specialist um, based at the University Teaching Hospital, Women and Newborn Hospital. Yeah. Thank I'm you, also Doc. a member of uh, Zago. Thank you. So, Doc, we have heard of adolescent pregnancy, widely known as teenage pregnancy. First of all, who is an adolescent? And in detail, could you just explain to our viewers what teenage or rather adolescent pregnancy is? Yeah, so, <clears throat> the term adolescent is uh, used synonymously with teenager by the World Health Organization. So, you, you either use adolescent or, or teenager. And um, the period of adolescence is taken as 10, between 10 and uh, 19 years old. So when you talk of an adolescent uh, or adolescent pregnancy, you're essentially referring to um, pregnancy in a woman that is aged between 10 and 19 years, who has not yet uh, physically developed to the full, uh, their full potential. What is the global perspective of adolescent pregnancy, especially from the World Health Organization point of view? So. According to the World Health Organization, um, adolescent pregnancy has become an important health issue uh, in a number of uh, countries, both the developed and the developing uh, world or developing countries. And um, around the world, however, I think sub-Saharan Africa, where we are, we seem to be quite affected. So it's a, it's a big uh, problem. In fact, WHO estimates that on a, uh, each year there are probably about 21 million uh, plus adolescents that, that uh, get pregnant. So if you look at those statistics, that's quite uh, huge numbers because some of them end up uh, dropping out of school as you earlier in introduced uh, the subject. So it's a big concern uh, even for us as a country. Do we have latest statistics on adolescent pregnancy prevailing right now in Zambia? 
I should say, yes, fairly uh, recent. We do have some, some data. Um, for us as a country, Zambia has, uh, I mean, adolescent pregnancies have reached alarming levels. Um, the Minister of uh, Education does produce statistics. Um, they have a bulletin. And um, between 2006 and uh, 2013, they recorded uh, 117,000 plus um, adolescent or teenage pregnancies. And then between 2014 and uh, 2019, the statistics seem to suggest that we had over 91,000 um, school-going girls that uh, got pregnant. And you can understand that from there, some of them dropped out. The Minister of Education has got a re-entry uh, policy. But during that period, it's estimated that uh, slightly over 8,000 of the girls were uh, uh, re-enrolled, giving approximately about 56% or so, or so of re-enrollment. So the statistics still show that the numbers are quite big. So uh, based on the explanation you've given, will I be correct to say that adolescent pregnancy is a cause of concern in our country today? Definitely, uh, it is a cause of concern for so many uh, reasons, okay? So you are, you are right, it's a cause of concern. What could be the major causes of adolescent pregnancy in Zambia? So there's, I think, several factors. It's not like a one, one thing. Um, you know, our statistics indicate that uh, we have an uh, early age of uh, sexual initiation uh, in this country. If you look at the Zambia Demographic Health Survey, the 2018 does indicate that sexual activity or initiation is quite uh, early. We have uh, the challenge with early, early marriages, which I think you've had uh, a lot of publications from the media. Uh, where chiefs are involved in trying to uh, curb that uh, challenge. We, we have um, a number of um, uh, issues pertaining to traditional ceremonies, initiation, some of our ceremonies that seem to, um, I think, encourage uh, um, early sexual initiation. Um, we have, uh, in some places, low levels of education, uh, unemployment levels, um, um, alcohol consumption. So there are quite a number of uh, issues. Peer pressure, you would talk about. Um, all these would, I think, contribute to us having challenges with uh, teenage pregnancies. So when you talk about early sexual initiation, what exactly are you pointing at? So you have uh, young people that uh, indulge in sexual activity much earlier than they should. Look at age 15, 14, 13, they are engaging in sexual activity. So that's quite early and that puts them uh, at a risk of um, uh, teenage uh, pregnancies. So I think that's one of the challenges that we, need, uh, uh, we are faced with. Zambia, as we may know, is divided into spheres, which is the rural and the urban setup. So between the two setups, where do we see the high numbers of um, teenage pregnancies or rather adolescent pregnancies? Our statistics, uh, even when you look at the Zambia Demographic Health Survey, uh, seem to suggest that uh, our rural communities are much more affected compared to the urban communities. In fact, from the Zambia Health Demographic uh, uh, Survey 2018, it's indicating that uh, we had 37% um, teenage pregnancies in rural areas, uh, compared to 19% in, uh, in urban areas. So the rural is much more affected than the, the urban areas. So what's causing that discrepancy? What exactly is that so I think there could be a number of uh, a number of issues uh, 
that would be involved. Some of the things I already uh, mentioned, um, but also opportunities availed to these young people in these places, uh, social amenities that are availed to, uh, to them. Um, if you compare somebody who is in, uh, in my village in Chama and somebody in Lusaka, um, the, person, the person in the village, um, you find sometimes schools are a bit far and uh, they have to walk long distances. Uh, it's far much easier to consider getting married early uh, than somebody who is living in, uh, in, in Lusaka. And issues of poverty, poverty levels are high and these are putting pressure on uh, these uh, teenagers, especially that they're also having cravings, cravings for things that they need to access. Yeah, so I think those are some of the factors that probably could be contributing uh, to these uh, discrepancies. So uh, according to the explanation you've given, we see that uh, most of these uh, factors are on the socio-economical side. Is, is that correct? Yeah, in terms of uh, driving, the, driving the challenge of a teenage pregnancy, I think socio-economic factors seem to play a big role. Okay, uh, because even when you talk about uh, um, unemployment or opportunities, uh, economic opportunities, uh, you, you are talking of the same thing. Yeah, so uh, family backgrounds, culture comes in. Uh, so essentially, they are all around uh, the socioeconomic uh, uh, issues that we need to address. Uh, Doc, I know that there are always two people involved in the production of a pregnancy. And here we are talking about teenage pregnancy, meaning these girls are in upper primary, secondary, as well as colleges and universities. Yeah. Who, in your view, are the major culprits of impregnating these young girls? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, from uh, one study that uh, was done at the University Teaching Hospital, Women and Newborn Hospital, looking at these uh, adolescents, uh, it was noted that actually they were having boyfriends uh, far much older than them. So you have a grade 10 pupil who is going out with somebody maybe seven years older or eight years older than herself. So. They're not like peers, like classmates. They, it appears like they tend to go out with people that probably are economically empowered, if I may use uh, that term. And um, from there, you probably could deduce that maybe they're being pushed for economic benefits. They're trying to look at somebody who can, can supply their needs, if, uh, for lack of a better word. Yeah, so I think these are people that probably uh, may be working or doing some business and they have um, some facilities that these younger ones don't seem to have. And so the younger ones are, are craving for those uh, issues. They all want to have smartphones um, so they can be able to chat with others. So I think that's what I would, I would say. Okay. So you just uh, explained why those um, the girls get to to have these uh, boyfriends who are older than them so coming on the side of these men what could be the major reasons of them uh, wanting to have to have a girlfriend who's younger than them well so that's that's again another in interesting question which I think we need to invest investigate um, but you see I think it's just probably lack of morals, yeah, because uh, these older people are trying to take advantage, take advantage of the younger ones, okay, for, for various reasons. And you find that some of them actually are already married. They're married, exactly. yeah, they're married, they have uh, uh, wives at, at home, but still get young, young, young girls. Uh, sometimes you wonder what goes on in some of the homes, probably some social pressures, relationship dynamics um, could probably also come into, into play, how people are relating in these, uh, in these homes that are pushing people to get to extra, if, um, 
for lack of a better word, again, extramarital uh, relationships with younger people. Yeah, so it's really like taking advantage of uh, young girls that are vulnerable. And they know that they have money, they can influence them. The, the girls can't bargain so much because they, they need those resources. So basically it's taking advantage. More, more, more or less. Yeah, more or less. Because if you are married and you, you go out to Kablonga girls and you look, pick up a small girl who can't even negotiate with you, that's really a little bit unfair. You're really taking advantage of the girl. You've left your, your home. Yeah, so I think those are some of the issues that we really need to address. What's going on in these homes? No? Yeah. So, based on the explanations that you've given so far, uh, how would you describe the magnitude of teenage pregnancy in Zambia today? So the magnitude is quite uh, huge. Um, though over the years, it appears like there's been a decline uh, but uh, one study that we did at UTH, we were looking at 47, uh, 14% just at uh, UTH alone. But from the, like I indicated earlier on, from the Zambia Demographic Health Survey, it's indicating that uh, almost 30%, uh, 29% of, uh, um, of uh, teenage pregnancies exist in this country. So that's quite high. If you say 30%, it means that if you counted um, ten, ten uh, adolescents, three of them are likely to have conceived at that time. So that, that's quite uh, significant. Yeah. So we've looked at the, we've attached the, the, the topic teenage pregnancies just to the girl side. But then we also have um, rather teenage uh, fathers, boys who find themselves that they're responsible uh, for the pregnancy of this uh, young young girl. So uh, do we also see that these boys are affected when they find themselves in such situations where they become teenage fathers? Well, to some extent, but not as much as compared to the girl, because I think the uh, effects are much heavier on the girl, because the chance is high that she will drop out of school, and that has got consequences. It means that you are really curtailing her, her future prospects, isn't it? Yeah. Two, uh, there are consequences, health-related consequences. She may still be very small, very young, and um, carrying a big baby. That's going to be difficult for her to give birth. The chances are high that she'll end up with operation and all those challenges that are related to, uh, to the pregnancy. So, though... Um, the boy might be affected, he will not be chased from school, you see, he will continue, okay? The father might be upset with him, but they will pay for damage, they will organize. So you see that it's a little bit heavier on the, on the girl side. Even though government uh, has opened up uh, the fact that she can be pregnant, deliver, and then still come back to uh, continue with school. But the question is that, is it 100% that all of them uh, come back to continue with school? It's not like that. So I think that um, it's a little bit more on, on the girl. I see. So Zambia is a Christian nation, as we all know, yet so many unchristian deeds are on the rise. Older and young men alike have gone, to, have gone on a rampage in pregnancy young schoolgirls, as, as you've explained earlier. Why be right to say that we are failing our society by failing to protect our young girls, especially those who are still going to school. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, to some extent, I think you could be right. Uh, what I think that is critical is for us to be able to understand the drivers. What is really driving this challenge of, of uh, adolescent pregnancies? Okay. Um, as we earlier indicated, it's not one, one problem. You wish you could just pinpoint one issue and then deal with it. But there are several factors. Okay? He, the study that we did at the University Teaching Hospital, we noticed that actually out of those young adolescents who delivered, uh, over, like over 50% of them 
were coming from uh, homes that were like single pies or they are not being taken care of or looked after by both parents. So that brings in an issue of background, the family, the environment where this girl is growing up. Okay. So while we, we are looking at the, the men making them pregnant, uh, we are thinking where are these girls coming from? We need to profile those girls and understand the dynamics, the things that are involved in this particular So I think um, we need to look at all the issues. We are indeed failing the girls, but let's try to address what are the drivers. So how best can we protect our girls generally? So I, I think that this will be a multi-sectoral issue because if, for example, you consider early marriages, You must involve the gatekeepers in that place, okay? If you're looking at social economic amenities, that's coming back to government, developing some of these places, isn't it? So that um, these young girls can access some of these services that they are that are they are craving for. If we talk about uh, issues of, we'll have to bring in the Ministry of Education. And, uh, and government and other stakeholders. So again, we have to look at all the sectors that uh, are critical. The church will have to come in, you know, NGOs will have to come in, yeah. Uh, for those who have just joined us, this is Inside Health and today we are looking at teenage pregnancies, also known as adolescent pregnancies. Please feel free to make your contributions and also to ask those questions that you might have by dialing the number that's showing on your screen. Then you'll be part and parcel of today's program. So, Doc, we continue. You just explained the magnitude of uh, adolescent pregnancy in Zambia. Mm -hmm. So, which province or town, district, area is leading in terms of adolescent pregnancy? Would there be any explanation why there's that high number okay so i think looking at the documents or statistics from the minister of general education they seem to suggest uh, that uh, in terms of provincial distribution uh, you're looking at eastern province southern province northwestern and central provinces that were topping uh, in pregnancies at primary level in like in 2019 primary grades those provinces seemed to be to be high but for secondary grades uh, it appeared copper belt seemed to to lead and followed by southern and uh, northwestern provinces so again i think some of the things that we already mentioned uh, could be considered here uh, in terms of uh, how these provinces are developed compared to uh, the other, uh, what what issues, uh, what uh, services are available to these younger younger girls? Yeah. So when you talk about services being available, what kind of services are you talking about exactly? Yeah. So um, of course, we are looking at the education opportunities. Uh, we are looking at the general development in the in these uh, provinces, availability of economic opportunities we talked about, which people use to take advantage of these girls, isn't it? Um, we are looking at accessing uh, health services, uh, appropriate um, health education. Right now, we have this program on TV, okay? How many people in Chama, in my village, are watching this? You, you, you understand what I mean? Okay, so... Here in, in Lusaka, you've asked uh, that people can join on Facebook, um, uh, WhatsApp, all these social media platforms. But the rural community network is a challenge. They will not be able to benefit from this kind of service. So it's trying to look at all these 
issues um, uh, these services that to provide them with uh, appropriate information knowledge education okay so they can be able to be able to make uh, informed decisions yeah. so when you talk about health education what kind of um, topics does that health education cover looking at the 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 topic in discussion right now yeah. Yeah, so, so that's, that's again an important question. Uh, we are discussing uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights. Uh, in some of these places you go to, you will find that these uh, adolescents are not exposed to any uh, sexual and reproductive health information. Uh, parents probably rarely sit with their children to educate them, to say now you've reached um, your age of menarche, you've started having your menstruation, you should avoid doing this, this. We have traditional ceremonies, some of them have got, they seem to tailor their teachings to prepare the girl to handle a man. So you see, so the girl will be under pressure that at 13 years I should test myself. Uh, you get the point. So exposure to information like uh, comprehensive health education, uh, sexual reproductive health information, that I think is critical, which those who are in urban areas tend to benefit much more because we have all these facilities uh, available to us. Okay, right now we'll go on a commercial break, but don't go away, we'll be right back. It is said there cannot be universal health coverage without enhanced sexual reproductive health and rights. This is why the Zambia Association of Gynecologists and Obstetricians, ZAGO, brings you Inside Health TV program, a program that promotes sexual reproductive health rights and also discusses various health issues affecting people from all walks of life. Join me, Tumenji Chinjili, every Sunday from 20 to 21 hours on KBN TV DSTV Channel 279 and Topstar 102. We'll also be live on Zago and KBN Facebook pages and YouTube channels. Tune in and share that health experience. Good morning, afternoon, evening, Indian Senate Masuri. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drift the Trick, and you're now watching Chinimbo Pamanimbo at KBN TV. Pakali Kanyamati. I try to explain to them when I choke before drifting. I used to walk down. the battle for the African football title reaches climax. Catch live the semi finals starting on the 2nd of February and finals on the 6th on Top Star for only 135 quarter antenna classic or 140 quarter dish smart. Cheer your team to the end. Start your AFCON semi finals on Wednesday, 2nd February and witness the Taranga Lions of Senegal clash with Burkina Faso at 21 hours on World Football and the Pharaohs of Egypt versus the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon on Thursday, 3rd February at 21 hours. Also on World Football. Then don't miss the grand finale of the AFCON on Sunday at 21 hours on World Football and see who will be crowned the Kings of Africa. Also follow the drama in the new bigger and better Divorce Club reunion as we unpack confrontations, fighting, and resolutions. So grab yourself a Topster Decoder now. Subscribe now and enjoy great football and best entertainment. Topster, enjoy digital life. There cannot be universal health coverage without enhanced sexual reproductive health and rights. This is why the Zambia Association of Gynecologists and Obstetricians, ZAGO, brings you Inside Health TV program, a program that promotes sexual reproductive health rights and also discusses various health issues affecting people from all walks of life. Join me, Tumenji Chinjili, every Sunday from 20 to 21 hours on KBN TV. DSTV Channel 279 and Topstar 102. We'll also be live on Zago and KBN Facebook pages and YouTube channels. Tune in and share that health experience. Welcome back. This is Inside Health. Uh, remember, today we are looking at adolescent pregnancy, or rather commonly known as teenage pregnancy.
for those that are just joining us now, please, there's a number that's scrolling on your screen so that you're able to ask those questions and also make the contributions that you might have so that you're part and parcel of this program. Remember, we're also on, on our Facebook uh, pages, which is Zago, as well as KBN TV. We are streaming live there. You can also be part and parcel of us by following our pages there. So, Doc, we get back to our discussion. Doc, will you agree with me that most young girls, as well as young women, especially those in schools, when they fall pregnant, unintendedly or unplanned, they usually terminate or rather abort their pregnancy without birth. And most terminations, unfortunately, are unsafe. Why is it so? Yeah, so, <clears throat> again, there could be a number of reasons. Um, the young people all of a sudden discover she's pregnant. As a young person, is get, she gets overwhelmed with fear. Fear, one, fear, what will my dad do? My dad will just kill me. My dad can't tolerate this nonsense. My dad told me that I'll be a doctor, I'll, I'll be a journalist, I'll be what? This is not news that my mother will welcome. So I'd rather abort. I would rather act on it immediately. And you see, the, the action would uh, not be the conventional action. She probably will seek some advice from somewhere else or from some compounds and uh, hence engage in illegal termination. They, so they get overwhelmed with fear. They do not know where to go, who to talk to, who to uh, ask for advice or guidance. So I think those factors seem to uh, play a role in terms of, you know, pushing these um, young people um, into these uh, abortions. So from the medical point of view, could you just share with us how dangerous uh, these unsafe termination or abortion are? So unsafe terminations which many times uh, are done from some of these uh, uh, compounds using sticks using herbs um, are, are quite serious they are associated with serious medical complications so one the young girl might bleed and bleed to death okay in the process of trying to procure that abortion using a stick or an instrument, the womb might be perforated. And they use sticks. They will come to the hospital with um, a lot of infection, with pus, and uh, uh, sometimes you may find that the kidneys have stopped working, and, uh, and eventually they have pus in the, in the tummy um, for which they will require operation and um, we've seen young people dying um, because of trying to procure an abortion okay and sometimes you find that uh, a mother or a mother might be involved okay so a mother and, and the daughter say let's arrange that this pregnancy is terminated before your dad knows because we can't stand uh, the behavior of your dad yeah so there are quite serious complications um, that follow and they need to be avoided so how often do you come across such cases where they, they've, they've done the unsafe termination and maybe the process hasn't ended there so they, there's need for them to come to the hospital so how often do you come across such uh, instances at the, the hospital I think that these happen quite quite often uh, in the sense that uh, the people that are conducting these abortions are not qualified people, okay? And so some of the things that would prevent complications uh, are not considered by traditional or herbalists or an old man in Tendere or in Chawama somewhere, okay? So by the time they're coming to the hospital, Indeed, germs have been introduced in the birth passage and, uh, and, uh, and a lot of that infection has gone in. So most of the times you'll find that they're actually uh, associated with complications.
So what could be the negative impact on families and the nation at large, both financially and socially, because of safe uh, and safe abortion? Yeah, so I think uh, that the effects, of course, will be quite uh, heavy on the adolescent, um, on the adolescent herself, in the sense that she will suffer uh, probably, again, loss, like we, told, we talked about loss, dropping out of school, uh, that just the whole future is, is destroyed. But also, she'll be, she, she will have all these complications, medical complications, which again put more pressure on the health systems. Um, they uh, taking care, she might require blood transfusion, she might require operation uh, facilities, uh, and all those demand resources uh, to be availed or available in the hospitals. So there's quite a lot of pressure, uh, not just on the individual, but also even on uh, what government is able to provide. So this is something that I think needs to really be addressed. So we see that maternal mortality in Zambia is still high. Is there a connection between teenage pregnancies and the maternal mortality that we, we are facing as a country? Yes, there is. In, in fact, the World Health Organization, uh, they say that adolescents who are aged between 15 and 19 years old are twice as likely to die during pregnancy or childbirth compared to those that are older by 20 years. So the chance of dying is much higher uh, from these adolescents because of, of course, a number of uh, uh, issues. They are not fully developed, again, to be carrying a baby, and uh, they face a lot of uh, medical uh, complications which are associated with pregnancy, and again, sometimes because of uh, engaging in unsafe abortions. So, yes, um, there is a direct connection or link with uh, my mortalities or death arising from pregnancy-related complications uh, because of teenage pregnancies. From what I understand, the fundamental principle of uh, governing your organization, which is ZAGO, is to save lives, especially the lives of our girls and also our women. What are you doing as an institution in addressing which I may call the silent killer problem of teenage pregnancy? Yeah, thanks for that question. The, the association, uh, as you probably might know, is currently doing a lot uh, to avert the consequences of uh, teenage pregnancies. Um, at the moment, every obstetrician and gynecologist practicing in this country is a member of, of Zago. And they are all over across the, the country. Um, trying to provide the high quality care that these adolescents and teenagers uh, need. Uh, but besides that, the organization is also working with different stakeholders uh, in different campaigns to sensitize uh, our communities on the dangers of adolescent pregnancies and also engaging in unsafe, unsafe abortions, um, raising awareness in these uh, uh, the different uh, uh, provinces. There are also programs that are running on so, uh, social media platforms uh, targeting the young people. Um, also, again, intended at raising awareness uh, on um, the services that they're able to access uh, in these uh, health facilities relating to uh, sexual and reproductive health. Yeah, so the organization is doing quite a lot. So you, you just mentioned that you, 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 you work with different stakeholders and earlier you gave an explanation to say uh, girls uh, practice um, safe termination of pregnancy because uh, there's a provision of maybe some herbs from traditional healers. So uh, traditional healers also part of your stakeholders that, that you work with? Yeah, so being also community members and um, people that uh, uh, do provide some kind of service, yes, they, they cannot be excluded 
from the stakeholder list. There are people that need to be engaged, yes. Yeah, so uh, Zago has to work with, with everybody, uh, bring them on board. And that's why in terms of raising awareness, they are, they are targeted. So, so far, what's been their feedback? Because I believe for them, it's some sort of business because they claim to, to be providing these services at a cheaper price. So what has been the, the response so far? I think as you can expect, uh, because you are more or less uh, uh, interfering with a, a trade that has been there for ages. Yeah, so that thing has to be dismantled for people to understand that there's a, a, a better way of providing this service. There are care providers in these uh, health facilities that have been trained uh, and capable uh, of providing these uh, the high quality services that the teenagers need rather than risking their lives uh, accessing the other kind of uh, service uh, which is uh, provided by uh, some of the people at a fee. Yeah, these services are free in these uh, health facilities. So yes, the, it's an ongoing process and I'm sure that the association hasn't yet uh, reached the desired goals but there is prog uh, significant progress that is being made to that effect. So as an institution, as you are trying to address this, this problem, are you also looking at the aspect of teaching adolescents on the use of contraceptives? Exactly. So uh, you bring in a very important aspect, and that's the issue of contraception, uh, which is um, uh, one challenge that we have, the contraceptive contraceptive utilization among the young people is quite low for many other reasons yeah so this is one and again this subject of contraception among young people divides communities uh, even in the country because uh, people will say how can young people be accessing uh, contraceptives and there are all these myths that are associated with uh, the use of uh, contraceptives by people that are not married or people that have never been pregnant before. So those are some of the areas uh, that uh, work is still going on to sensitize individuals that they should access contraceptives. Because that way then you'll be uh, avoiding these unintended uh, pregnancies. Okay, so Doc, just as you've explained to say there's, um, there, are, there are different myths and also debate in our communities to say um, adolescents cannot be using contra uh, contraceptives because they are too young and you cannot be exposing them to such services. So what is too young and what is too old? At what age should an adolescent person start using contraceptives? So that's a good question. Uh, you should be asking uh, this adolescent who engages in uh, uh, sexual activity, is she at risk of pregnancy? If she is, then she should use a, a contraceptive to prevent the pregnancy, okay? So at the point that somebody engages in unprotective sexual uh, activity, they should consider or they should be reminded that potentially they could conceive. By that act, they could conceive. And so, from the health point of view, are there ways in which somebody can prevent themselves from getting pregnant? Yes. What is that? It's the use of contraception. Okay, so, so the, the simple answer would be that at the point that the person is engaging in sexual activity, at that point, then they put themselves at risk of, of pregnancy. So there's no too early. This so long as some, somebody or this young person exactly. is engaging in sex, exactly. they should be using the exactly. contraceptives. Yeah, exactly, because even the same contraceptives, uh, we use them for other disease conditions, not necessarily that we're trying to prevent pregnancy. And some of those that utilize them for those purposes are adolescents, they're young people. But even when you make that suggestion to a mother who brings a child to you and say, no, I want, I'm prescribing contraception 
as treatment, then you get that resistance that no, my daughter uh, is not sexually active. Okay, so, so it's not just uh, about pregnancy prevention that the contraceptives uh, work, they could also be used for other medical conditions. Yeah, so we, for that purpose, do not say because this one is uh, 15 years, can't use it. So how readily are the contraceptives available to the young ones? Do the young ones have to seek parental consent for them to, to come and access those services at the hospital or any health facility? The Minister of Health, uh, as far as I know, um, does not indicate that a youth seeking this kind of service needs to get parental consent. Okay, these services, in fact, the healthcare providers in these facilities will not demand that uh, there is uh, consent given. Okay, so they can access these services uh, so long they wish to. There is there's no barrier. Um, these services are available in these, uh, our facilities across the country. So as I earlier stated that Zambia is a Christian nation, we have so many of these ungodly you know, deeds of uh, where we see that men are impregnating young girls and we see as a result these unsafe abortions. This is a topic of concern, but why are we so silent on such an import, uh, important topic? Why are we silent to talk about it? Because this is something that's you know, uh, needs immediate uh, efforts to be to be addressed. So, are you saying that the country, as a country, we are silent? Or? Yes. Why are we silent? We, we don't really talk about it as we should, as you have explained earlier. To say we, we see that girls do not, you know, uh, maybe finish their education. They don't reach their full potential. But it's like we just sing about it's just like a song. We just sing about yeah. it, but we don't really put our efforts. So maybe one of the things that we need to look at in addressing your concern or your question is that some of the solutions, proposed solutions, or should I say interventions, are sensitive. Here we, we just talked about the use of contraception among young people. And people will be asking questions. Should you put contraceptives at a school, at a, at a secondary school, and then a grade uh, eight pupil, when we, knocking off from school, carries the contraceptives. What would a mother say? <laughs> you understand? They are sensitive, dividing the, dividing communities, or people having divided opinions. So, so we have challenges that we need to, uh, uh, to face. It is those kind of things that uh, uh, will appear like this is being pushed in the back or people should be silent. Hence, you see, the parents also are not able to discuss these issues uh, with, uh, with their children. A mother would prefer sending her daughter to an auntie to go and educate her on uh, sexual and reproductive health issues. I'm sure you're aware of that, you see. So these kind of things, I think we need, they, they need to change. Uh, so that you can be able to sit and discuss and openly uh, address some of these issues. So it should actually start from the home. Of course, from. of course. Okay, because if you have a child, you should be the mentor to the child. You should be the. Why are you taking the child to another person? Say go to cafe and uh, and be taught about sexual issues. When you, the mother, you are fully aware about all the things that are around. And then you hand over your child to somebody else. So the child doesn't hear anything, doesn't know anything. So we are all, I mean, these things are secretive. And so people are discovering now on YouTube, on social media, uh, Facebook. And that's when the mother now discovers messages the daughter has been exchanging with somebody. Uh, you, you get the point. Yeah, so I think that, of course, it may appear like we are silent, but... Uh, things are happening. Um, there's been s stakeholder sensitization going on. Uh, churches are being engaged. Um, 
because these communities are being engaged to sensitize them on these ch uh, challenges. So this should be an ongoing process. Yeah. So in your view, Doc, what should be done to address the issue of adolescent pregnancy and ensure that our young girls and women are protected from people who use economic power, as you've explained earlier, and also social influence to kill their future? Yeah. So in my view, I don't think there is one single solution because we said that uh, there are several factors, mm -hmm. several. So if we are going to address this issue, it's going to take that we address all these areas of concern, okay? So look at families. Families are breaking up. Just recent, I think that was last year, we saw huge statistics of divorces from the courts. Okay, over 200,000 uh, families breaking up. So that, when a, a, a family breaks up like that, mm -hmm. it puts pressure also on who? On the kids, okay, the upbringing. So the children now will be vulnerable, okay? So then the young people, so it's a vicious circle. Then the older men will prey on them because they are vulnerable. They want these uh, things that others are having. Uh, you understand? So if we are going to address uh, these issues, we definitely we cannot ignore the fact that we need to consider a multi-sectoral approach, okay, involving all the key stakeholders, okay, uh, the churches, um, of course, government uh, um, structures, including the Minister of Health, in raising awareness and sensitization, organizations like Zago, okay, organizations like the UN, the UNICEF, UNFPA, you see all of them have a role. Others are focusing on provision of contraceptives, um, UNESCO, they're talking of con comprehensive uh, um, sex education for, for these uh, children. So all these things, I think, have to be addressed. We can't just say it's one thing that will sort out uh, everything. Development has to be taken to some of these rural, rural facilities so that these young girls can easily access education opportunities, isn't it? Yeah. So when you talk about sensitization, do we have uh, sensitizations going on in schools? Because we, that's where we see that our girls have uh, having this issue of teenage pregnancies? Yeah, so I think for some years now, there's been a lot of debate on uh, comprehensive sexuality education, the changing of the syllabus. You probably are aware about that, uh, where there's been a drive to provide uh, age-specific sexual education, okay? So all this is intended to uh, expose younger ones to the uh, correct and accurate information, probably much earlier, uh, before their minds are poisoned or for, um, disturbed uh, on the way. Sensitizations are going on uh, in these communities. There are uh, non-government organizations that are focusing just on some of these areas we've uh, discussed to raise again awareness, okay, among youths, okay. You have youth-friendly corners in, in, in health facilities. All these are working at raising awareness for, for young people. So just on um, youth-friendly corners, the aspect that you've just brought in, do we have these youth-friendly spaces in all health facilities in Zambia, especially the rural setup? Yeah. I, I think the drive is is to have them all over, but of course you may um, face limitations in some of the places for different reasons, human resource challenges, yeah. Uh, so I wouldn't say that they are all over, but they are there in all these provinces. Um, how, f how much of it do we have in, in, in all the, the clinics that sometimes is affected by the human resource uh, challenges that we, we face as a country. So hopefully that maybe as we move forward, as more health workers are employed, maybe these are some of the things that 
to be able to to cover up interesting so since we are running out of time doc is there anything social spaces such as schools churches even homes can do to protect our girls and women from being abused by men because i believe um teenage pregnancies are committed even in these very spaces that i've just mentioned yeah so i i, I think that these um, spaces uh, need to play their role the church needs to play its roles uh, all churches have got young people and some of these uh, facilities they probably are the big, uh, biggest uh, proportion of those churches i think that uh, programs need to be implemented that strengthen uh, raising awareness of the problem that is at hand uh, homes we need to strengthen our values, uh, in my view. Uh, I think what we are seeing in the country where we're having the divorce rates that are very high is, uh, is not good for us because it's breaking up uh, families. We need to s deal with that aspect. I think sensitization for early marriages, dealing with early marriages needs to continue uh, because that's another very important uh, space that uh, would significantly contribute to reducing the challenge that we are faced with besides uh, people being able to access the um, correct appropriate health care services that are provided in these uh, our facilities across the country so briefly doc what could be your closing remarks as we come to the end of the program I think that my closing remarks is just to remind our, uh, ourselves and the viewers that indeed teenage pregnancies or adolescents are a serious concern for us. They have reached alarming levels in the country and uh, we need to all come together and fight this because it's uh, affecting the future for the young people in the country. So um, as we come to the end of the program, thank you to all our viewers who've been part of this program at, uh, right at this stage. Remember, this is Inside Health. We are always here on Sundays from 20 to 21 hours. Please put those reminders. Even next Sunday, we'll be here. This uh, Sunday, we are looking at teenage pregnancies or other uh, adolescent pregnancies, and it was quite interesting. I was joined by Dr. Andrew Kumwenda. Next week, we'll have yet another interesting topic. So please join us next Sunday. This is Inside Health with Tumenji Chinjili. It's bye-bye for now and God bless. It is said there cannot be universal health coverage without enhanced sexual reproductive health and rights. This is why the Zambia...